Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship service. Uh, normally here, I would say something about the nature of the service, um, and I normally would say that uh, we hope that the uh, service itself would be sort of the calm, the eye of the holiday storm. Um, and I most certainly hope that that is the case. But I'm also hoping that this is calm in the eye of a bigger storm, the, big, the storm that was uh, 2020. Um, it has not gone as we had hoped, uh, which is probably a very big understatement. Um, and while I would give anything uh, to be with all of you, for all of you to be here uh, on Christmas Eve, um, again, as I've said, I think other times during the course of, of the year as we've gone uh, virtually worshiping, um, We are nonetheless together uh, in ways, um, in ways I think that are as important and perhaps not more important uh, than actually physically being together. Um, the night, this night, uh, is holy, not because of where we are or, are where, or where we are not. The night is holy because of what it means, what has happened, what we remember happening so long ago. It is a part of our collective memory as Christians, and not only that, it is also uh, uh, pointing us toward the future, a future where Christ is king, a future where um, everything is made new. And so as we begin our worship this evening, um, let's take a moment to think again about what happened that night why it is a holy night and think about uh, a day in the future when we will be together again when we will be able uh, to worship in person where we will be able to have fellowship and shake hands and offer hugs um, it is that hope that um, that really is is fueling uh, uh, these last several days as as i've come to prepare for this service. So uh, know that, uh, that I miss you all uh, and hope that you have a, a merry and blessed Christmas. So let's take a moment now to prepare ourselves to worship Christ our King.
Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The priest Zechariah said before John's birth, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness, to guide our feet into the way of peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The evangelist John said what has come into being in him was life, and the life is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God is for us. God is with us. God is coming into our lives in a new way. The birth of the Christ child is the renewal of hope, a reminder that Christ will come. Keep watch for the light, it is drawing near. O come, O come, Emmanuel, let us pray. God of love, our hearts are moved by your gracious promises fulfilled for us in Jesus Christ. And so we come to you this night with adoration, praise, and thanksgiving. Our anticipation grows as we come nearer to the day of great celebration of the birth of your Christ. Open our hearts that we may truly receive the gift of your Son in our hearts and know that the joy of life with you. Give us the grace we need to live lovingly in all of life and empower us to make your love known through the deeds of our lives. This we pray through Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our brother and our friend. Amen.
hear God's word this evening, let us pray. Almighty God, as we prepare with joy to hear the story of the birth of our Savior and celebrate the gift of the Christ child, embrace the earth with your glory and let your word be for us a shining living hope. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It is chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. I invite you to listen for God's word. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. A people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord.
gospel reading this evening is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. It is Luke's version of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've chosen this evening the King James Version. Um, every once in a while I, I like to use this particular version. I invite you to listen for God's word to perhaps hear this story in a fresh way. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed to everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the shepherds were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go even now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard as it was told unto them. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
I'm an innkeeper by trade. Uh, Pep in one for many years. My aunt isn't fancy. Um, there are no maids that come every day and change the linens. There's no wake up calls, no bed turn down service, no continental breakfast. In fact, it's my house. And I've only plain rooms with straw on the floor for passers by to sleep on. That's all there is. Well, there are also a few stables out back for, you know, the guests' horses and, and their pack animals. I gotta tell you though, um, a few weeks ago, I had some really unusual guests, okay? Um, a group of folks who called themselves the people of the way. Um, some refer to them as Christians. Now, I've heard of these people. They were, by many accounts, troublemakers. So much hostility in Israel because of them and their beliefs. They, they had this leader, uh, called Jesus from Nazareth. And they say that he died, that he was crucified, but they also say that he rose from the dead. They say that several of their group actually saw him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what they call this Jesus? They called him the Christ, the Messiah. Can you imagine that? <laughs> the Messiah from Nazareth? <laughs> Everybody knows that nothing good can come from Nazareth. But they spoke of him as a great teacher, as a, a healer a, a, and a miracle worker. They spoke about him reverently, you might even say lovingly. Now, Christians have never stayed here before, and I usually don't spend you know, that much time with my guests, but the more these people talked about this Jesus, their Messiah, well, I've got to be honest with you, I'll, I'll tell you, the more captivated I became. It was strangely fascinating, but I'll also admit more than a little troubling. You know, they, they began by reciting our scriptures, you know, what you call the New Testament, or the Old Testament, that talk about the coming of, of the Messiah, about his birth here in Bethlehem. Now, of course, this was news to me, but then it hit me, wait, 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 Be Bethlehem? We're in Bethlehem, and I've lived here my entire life, and I'm pretty sure that if the Messiah had been born here, I'd know. Trust me, small town, there is nowhere and no way that you're gonna hide something like that. There are no signs posted, you know, at the city limits proclaiming Bethlehem, birth of the Messiah. There's none of that. No Messiah in Bethlehem, I told them. Undaunted, they continued their story. They talked about this great star up in the sky, which they said proclaimed the Messiah's birth. But you know, come to think of it, there was a star like that at one time. It was about, yeah, I'd say a little over 30, 30 years ago. It happened around the time that uh, Quirinius if I'm remembering right, was the governor of Syria. And Rome had called for yet another census to tax us. As I say, it was, it was all quite a while back. But I remembered seeing the star. And I remember not paying all that much attention to it. I mean, hey, I'm an innkeeper, not an astronomer. <laughs> Besides, I had to prepare rooms for my guests with, you know, what with people needing to go back to their hometowns to register for this census. I didn't have time uh, to worry about any star. But these Christians, they knew of this star. It was important to them. They also knew about the things that happened that anyone not from Bethlehem would know. How the birth of the Messiah was made known to shepherds, uh, you know, with knowing smiles. They told uh, the story of how these shepherds came to the stable uh, to see this baby Messiah, the, 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 this Christ child, and how they left the stable singing, you know, proclaiming glory to God for what they'd witnessed. I mean, how would they have known about shepherds? My friends and I talked about that. You know, we talked about seeing shepherds in town the night of that star. I'll, I'll be honest with you, we laughed about it at the time. Um, because shepherds were, well, strange people. We would never see them in town after dark, which would have meant that they had left their flocks alone. Now, shepherds wouldn't do that. 
But we wondered why they would come into Bethlehem that night, why they would come into town. We figured they were just crazy, you know? I mean, they were shepherds, right? But how in the world did these Christians know this story? I mean, why is it so important to them? I mean, they talked about people called um, magi, magi, magi. They were wise men, astrologers from the courts of some eastern kings, Persia probably. And they traveled all the way here to see this baby. The idea of Persians in Judea struck me as more than a little bit odd, but now come to think of it, there were men here who fit the description. They stood out in particular because they did something very odd. They came to Bethlehem to town during the day, but left secretly in the cover of night as if they were hiding something. We wondered why. We thought maybe they'd stolen something. These Christians said that they knew why. They said that the men didn't want Herod, who was king at the time, to know where the Messiah was born. These guys feared for the child's life that Herod would try to kill him. Killing infants. Oh, how I've tried to forget. It happened a short time after these three strangers left. Herod killed all the young boys, two years and younger. Herod killed my son, my only son. Herod sent soldiers. They, they took our innocent babies from us and killed them. I've never understood why these Christians told me that our sons were killed because Herod wanted the Messiah dead and left nothing to chance. This didn't make much sense. I mean, I could understand Herod wanting to eliminate any threat to his rule. I mean, after all, he killed his own sons, but why kill the Messiah? Why kill someone anointed and sent by God? Now, as I was trying to figure that out, another question popped into my head. The Messiah, a baby? Why would God send the Messiah as a baby? I mean, come on. Surely God sees how the Romans treat us, how we suffer, the crosses that line the roads as a warning to anyone who dared oppose them? I mean, why wouldn't God send us a great king, a mighty warrior like our ancestor David? Now, he too was born here in Bethlehem. Huh, <laughs> what a coincidence. But seriously, how could all of this be? And what's more, how would these Christians know all of this? I mean, only someone from Bethlehem would and could know. I'll be honest, I became more troubled the more they talked. But then I started to ask questions about this Jesus, which they were more than happy to answer. They told me more about him. They told me all about the miracles, the teachings. They were telling his story. And as they were telling this story, I felt something stir inside me, you know, something new, something overwhelming. Somehow uh, th these Christians were telling me the truth, that the Messiah was sent to us as a child and that he was born right here in Jerusalem. And what's more, it was a profound truth and I wanted to believe, but I still had doubts. Then as if sensing this, one of them put his hand upon mine. He looked me right in the eye and he, and he told me, let me tell you how it happened. And he told me the story. He told me that a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, came with Mary, his wife-to-be, from Nazareth to Bethlehem to register for the census. 
Mary was pregnant well into her ninth month, and he told me that while they were here, the baby, their, their firstborn, was born. He tells me that, that Mary had, had wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, a, a feeding trough for animals, because there was no room for them in the inn. Wait a minute, I thought. No place for them in, in the inn? Oh, no. It, it, it couldn't possibly be. I, I began to sob uncontrollably. Uh, after a moment, I gathered myself as best I could, and I told them why I'd been crying. I, 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 it was because, as they told the story, I remembered something. It seemed so insignificant at the time, eh, barely worth noting. A young couple came to my inn. They'd come much, much later than all the rest, much, much later. The man's young wife was very pregnant, like she could deliver at any moment. I had no room for them. I told them that I was sorry, but that they'd come too late. I didn't have room for them. I, I felt bad, so I offered them the stable. They were so desperate, they, they took it. And now these Christians are telling me that this woman had given birth to the Messiah, that this child was the son of the Most High God and was born in my stable. How, how was I to know? I began to cry again. It, it, it all happened under my nose in my own house while I slept. I know it now. God. Help me, I know it now. And there are no words to express how I feel, what I feel. God was here. The Messiah was here. And I missed it. I missed it. it if only I had known who the young couple was. If only I had known who the child was, I would have gladly make, made room for them. I would have given them my room, but I didn't. So I missed him. I missed the Son of God. <laughs> there was so much happening at the time. I, I mean, preparing for guests, buying and preparing food, cleaning up and so on. And, in the midst of all that preparation, the Messiah was born right here in my house. And I missed it. That's my concern for you. And that's why I wanted to come and talk with you tonight. I had prepared for many guests, but missed the most important one. I guess it's true that God comes in his time and not ours. So we must be ready. But we must also, I think, beware because it's so easy to be caught up in the preparation that you miss the time to celebrate the birth of your Messiah. I implore you, don't do as I did. Don't be so busy that you forget to let him in. And here's the thing. If we truly wish to prepare for the coming of our Lord, whether it be in the celebration of Christmas or his coming again in glory, there is something that we must do. We must take the time to prepare our hearts we must prepare room for him there. Otherwise, we'll not only 
have missed the point, but will have missed him. When that happens, everything else becomes, well, utterly meaningless. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen.
Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Sovereign God, you are never revealed so completely as in the face of the child of Bethlehem. Hear us as we give thanks to you for those who today reveal your love in our world in his spirit. We pray for those who become your hands and feet by serving their neighbor, for those who give you a mouth by speaking words of justice and peace for the broken and oppressed. We pray for those who give your poverty the look of hope for your reign, revealing you simply by being your children, reflecting your beauty as Jesus did. We hold in prayer the lonely and hurting, the hungry and the homeless, the sick and dispossessed, knowing that your heart has always been nearest to those who were poor in spirit and least likely to be thought of as people touched by the hand of the divine. As we remember how you come to live among us in the flesh, and as we celebrate that moment long ago which lived forever in the hearts of those who believe, as we long for your fullness in our lives, that we too might become the goodness and love of Christ in our day, we ask that you bless us, your church, to be food for the hungry and hope for those who are lost and alone, a living testament of Christ's faithfulness to you. May all who drink of your one spirit receive new life to give to those in our world who are thirsty for meaning and belonging. Pour out your spirit upon us, your people. Continue in our lives the mystery of Christmas. Let your Son become flesh in us, so that we may reveal to you, to our world, all the days of our lives. Holy Child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Hear us as we lift our personal prayers to you, our joys and our concerns, both aloud and in silence. Gracious God who comes to us in Jesus Christ, in our busy preparations and our joyous celebrations, may we not crowd you out of our minds as he was crowded out of the inn on that first Christmas. Forbid that we should spend all for passing pleasures and fail to find the deeper, richer joys that do not fade with the close of the day. Draw us back to the manger. Rekindle our sense of wonder and worship. Grant that as we find you in the likeness of a little child, we may experience a new reverence for childhood and a more sincere longing for those qualities of the heart of a child. Forgive our cynicism and pride, banish our doubts, restore our faith in the things that we cannot see or hear, the star that shines in human souls, the song of peace that lingers over a world troubled by war and pandemic. Like the shepherds, may we return to our humble lives knowing that heaven is not some distant place, but is ever near because of the coming of the Christ child, and that in him you have revealed yourself here among even people like us. Bless us, O Lord, one and all on this night, this Christmas day and always. We lift our hearts in praise and would seek to serve you as a follower of your beloved Son, assured that in following him is perfect freedom and peace. For it is in his name and for his sake that we pray. And now let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
peace, joy, love. Four candles, four promises, all continually offered to us by God, all made manifest in the one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us in all our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ we find light and life and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in darkness have seen the light of the Lord growing brighter day by day. This night, the true light arrives. This night, the light shines brightest. The light of hope has come. The light of love has come. The light of joy has come. The light of peace has come. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us kindle the light of the Lord. Let us pray. Steadfast God, we rejoice in your presence in our lives and in your unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary in Bethlehem, growing through adulthood into an adult ministry in all his life manifesting the peace, love, and justice of God. His voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promise as clear to us as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night in our hearts, our minds, our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Come, Lord Jesus where we pray most humbly in your holy name. Amen and amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. <laughs>